Okay, question number five from October 2018, S1 IAL, um, discrete random variables. The discrete random variable X is defined by the cumulative distribution function as given here. Now, what this is, is basically the sum of all the probability distributions um, as you go along. So they ask us to find the probability distribution using this. So basically what we're going to do, we're going to have X and we're going to have the probability that X is equal to X. And we've got one, two, three, four, and five as we have up there. But what was going to happen, this is like going to be the same as 3K over two, whatever the value that's going to be. But this 4K is a sum of these two. And this 15K is a sum of these three. And this 12K is a sum of these four. And this 35K over two is a sum of these five. And these all add up to one. That means 35K over two must equal one. So that means K is equal to two over 35. All right, so now k equals 2 over 35, I can find what these are. So I've got 3 times, uh, 3 over 2 times 2 over 35. 2 cancel, leaving you with 3 over 35. So I know that that is 3 over 35. I'll just write that over here underneath. This is the actual value of fx. Okay, so it is fx, so it's, it's his actual value rather than in terms of k, in, in, once we've found k. So this is, also, this is also fx, but the actual values of fx. Um, then you got 4 times k, so it's 4 times 2 over 35, which is 8 over 35. That's 8 over 35. Then you got 15 over 2 times k, which is 15 over 2 times 2 over 35, or the 2's cancel, leaving you with 15 over 35. I'm not going to simplify this because I want to be able to add these together and make it easy for me. Then I got 12 times 2 over 35, which is 24 over 35. And then this is going to equal 1. Okay, so now that's 35 over 35, you can say. All right, let's write that as 35 over 35, just in brackets. Okay, so now we know that this must be the same as that. But I know that I have to add something to this to give me that. Well, that must be 5 over 35. If I add these together, I'm going to get 8 over 35, right? And I have to add something to 8 over 35 to give me 15 over 35. Well, that's 7 over 35. And you can see if we add these together, I'm going to have 8 plus 7, 15, right? And then I know I have to multiply, I have to add something from 50 to 15 to give me 24 over 35. Well, that must be 9 over 25, so over 35. And we can see that if I add these together, I'm going to have uh, 15 plus 9, 24. And then I have to add something to 24 over 35 to give me 1. Well, that's 1 is like 35 over 35 to have it add 11. So this must be 11 over 35. And we've answered part A. Okay. Part B says, find the probability that X is between 1.5 and 3.5. Now, we're talking about discrete random variables. We're talking about these whole number values, these particular values. We're not caring about anything between these values. So what is... What are the values of x which are between 1.5 and 3.5? Well, there's only 2 and 3. They're discrete values. So we've got to find the probability of 2 plus the probability of getting a 3, which is going to be 5 over 35 plus 7 over 35, which is 12 over 35. And there's our answer. Simple as that. Okay, simple as that. Um, by the way, we can simplify this if we want. This is like 1 over 7, and this is like 1 over 5. Okay, but it's fine to leave it like this because it's easy for us to deal with additions and stuff if you've got the same denominator. Then it says a random variable y equals 12 minus 7x. Calculate the variance of y. Okay, now, if y equals 12 minus 7x, if y is the same thing as 12 minus 7x, then the variance of y will be the same as the variance of 12 minus 7x. Okay, because they're the same thing. Now, how do I deal with the variance of something like this, which is something which is um, transformed, okay, which has a linear kind of like coding? Well, with variance, whatever you add to the values doesn't change the, the variance. The variance is a measure of spread. It doesn't change it. So addition is ignored when we've, talk, when we've got a, like a transformation of variance. But what's not ignored is the multiplication. And remember, variance is like the, the square of the uh, you know, spread of the data. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the minus 7. 
Okay, we're going to square it and we're going to multiply that by the variance of x. Okay, and that will be the same as the variance of y. Okay, it's not affected by the addition, only affected by the multiplication. So the variance of y is 49 times the variance of x. So we need to find what the variance of x is. Now the variance of x we can find from this table. Okay, so let's just take this table and put it down there. So that we've copied the table and we're going to paste it down here. Okay, so this table here is what we just filled in in part, was it part A? Part A. Now, I want to use this table to find the variance of x. Now, I know that the variance of x, I'll just make it a bit smaller like this. I know that the variance of x, okay, is going to be equal to the square, the, the mean of the squares minus the square of the mean, which means e of x squared minus e of x squared. So basically, we're finding the mean of the squares and we're, we're subtracting from it the square of the mean. So we're going to find what x squared is, which is 1 and 4 and 9 and 16 and 25. Okay, and we're going to do 1 times this plus 4 times that plus 9 times that plus 16 times that plus 25 times that. That will give us ex squared. And we're going to take away from it, okay, the mean of ex but squared. So we're going to have 1 times 3 over 35. So let's just find these things here. Let's first find e of x, ex. Ex is going to be 1 of 3 over 35 plus 10 over 35 plus 21 over 35 okay plus 36 over 35 plus 55 over 35 okay so your answer is going to be out of 35 let's just add those together we're going to get 3 over 35 so we'll just do 3 plus 10 plus 21 plus 36 plus 55 that gives us 125 over 35 uh, 5 goes into both of those I think that's 25 over 7 isn't it 25 times 5 is 125 7 times 5 is 35 let's just make sure whoops press the wrong one um, we got 125 divided by 35 which gives us 25 over 7 right and then we've got to find what ex squared is Pen starting to play up now. Ex squared. Okay, that's going to be 1 times 3 over 35, which is 3 over 35, plus 4 times 5 over 35, which is 20 over 35. Okay, plus 9 times 7 over 35, which is 63 over 35. Okay, plus, and we got 16 times 9, which is 144. So 144 over 35. And 25 times 11, what's 25 times 11? 25 times 11, 25 times 11 is 275 over 35. Okay, and that's going to be something, of course, bigger. So let's see what that gives us. We can add these numbers together. So we've got 275 plus 144 plus 63 plus 20 plus 3 that gives us 505 over 35 505 over 35 and that gives us what that gives us 101 over 7 so 1 Oh, 1 over 7. So now we can find what the variance of x is. I, I know I'm not supposed to do this, but I'm going to just continue the, down here because I've run out of space. So I know the variance of x, therefore, the variance of x is going to be ex squared, which is 101 over 7 
minus the square of EX, which is going to be 25 over 7, but all squared. Okay, let's see what that gives us. Okay, so that gives us 1 over, one over 7 minus 25 over 7 squared. Whoops, I missed all of that, didn't I? 25 over 7 squared, which gives us 82 over 49. Okay, that's a nice number because remember, as we just worked out in the beginning of this part of the question, the variance of y is 49 times the variance of x. So we can work out what the variance of y is by just multiplying this by 49. So the variance of y is 49 times 82 over 49, which is 82. Okay, so it kind of like, seems like we're on the right tracks there because the numbers worked out so nicely. That's 82. So there we have the answer to part um, C. Okay, so now for part D, the question that many people are asking about. Okay, and you're in for a bit of a surprise here. Here we have part D. Now, here we're asked to find the probability that 4x is less than or equal to the absolute value of y. And many of you may not have seen this before um, because it's something that is not in the syllabus of C12. In fact, it comes in C34. Okay, and S1 and M1 are only meant to be tested on material from C12. Therefore, this question was actually cancelled from the paper. If you look at the, um, the scores for the UMS, like the grade boundaries, for this is the only paper you can see that's out of 72 marks because three marks were cancelled off the paper. And if you don't believe me, you can read this. This is from the examiner's report. Okay, this is the actual examiner's report for this question. And if you read the part of this question, which is mentioned over here, it says here, the error in part D was most unfortunate as knowledge of the modulus function, which is absolute value function, is not expected for students taking this unit. Some of the course did know, some of course did know what to do and answered this part successfully. And the remainder either left the question out or had a short stab and then moved on. The marks for this part were not included in the total and grade boundaries were adjusted appropriately. Okay, so the you know long and short of it is these type of questions can be answered once we've gone through the absolute value function and I won't be doing that today. Okay, uh, S1 exam is tomorrow and I've got lots of questions to answer. So I'll leave it at that.